about 112 million people. It's as one third of the territory of the European Union. Much of this region's potential remains underdeveloped. That was the idea of, of, of the whole project, in large part due to inadequate infrastructure. So there is a great challenge for, for, uh, uh, for, um, uh, for us because the European integration that followed the transformation of Central and Eastern Europe in 1990s um, has been focused along the east-west axis. It was just enlarging the European Union to the west. The, um, but in our region, uh, after this process, many, many challenges remained. Uh, and it's, it's, it's especially about improving transportation, energy, and communication infrastructure between our countries on the north-south axis to develop, uh, to develop IT uh, infrastructure, transportation, communication. And there is a big role uh, for, for um, foreign investors. And we um, really don't, um, don't like to, to, to have investors who are very eager uh, to, to invest. But uh, I don't want to mention the name of the country because I'm a diplomat. But you know uh, what kind of I mean. So, but if if uh, the United States, uh, the United States companies are not uh, interested enough, or the Western European companies, they will come. You know, they have already their own projects. It's it's not 12 countries, but a little more. But anyway, uh, so um, so this is the idea, and so this Three Seas Initiative has a great um, great support um, of the United States. Actually, the first visit of President Trump to Poland in 2017 was not only a visit to Poland, but it was a meeting of 12 presidents of these 12 countries. So there was a summit. So the, there was a pretext for President Trump's first visit to Poland. So his first visit to Poland was, at the same time, the first visit to, to, to these 12 countries, a meeting with the presidents. And uh, it was in 2017. Now we have 2020. And there are more and more you know, concrete projects involving um, American investors. Uh, and we also American um, government institutions. We hope that DFC and other institutions will be more involved financially in in, in strengthening this project. So, uh, um, and as I've already discussed with Patrick actually earlier today, it's it's a great opportunity maybe at some point to bring not only Poland but all these twelve countries to to Florida and think how the whole region can be present because uh, we know how strong the Floridian economy is, stronger than Polish. We all know that. And even, but with all these countries, we'll be stronger you know, when we come, you know, the 12 of us. So, uh, so that's, that's one of the ideas that the Three Seas Initiative, which has a strong political support because of, of the reason I kind of mentioned before, uh, to, that the Central and Eastern Europe should develop, but with with the help of American businesses, American government. So there is a kind of uh, understanding between government and, and, and businesses here that uh, this is um, a great challenge. Who will invest in Central and Eastern Europe and, and how, in what way it, 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 it should work. So um, the, second, the second important issue I wanted to mention, just uh, I, I'm trying to make it you know, uh, more concise in mean, my presentation because uh, I think we're running out of time. So as you know, and we have also energy challenges. The first challenge is, is uh, you may have heard of Nord Stream 2, this famous Russian uh, um, pipeline going from, from Russia to Germany, this very controversial project, which is actually um, uh, uh, you know, diminishes the competition of other energy providers because uh, the idea is to, to bring to, to, to Europe a lot of cheap Russian gas. And um, this, in our opinion, is not the best idea. And in American opinion, it's not the best idea, not only because of, of LNG imports from the United States to, uh, to Poland and Central and Eastern Europe, because, but it's also about security. So, um, uh, so we have this Nord Stream 2 uh, pipeline. Uh, the US government has recognized uh, Russia's use of, of energy exports as a political tool. And we, uh, both the United States and Poland, are strongly opposed to this 
this project to to this project to to this uh, pressure to to import a lot of Russian gas and making Europe dependent on on Russian gas. So um, the in recent years we um, we've been cooperating very closely with with the United States. As you may know, in 2016 we opened the. LNG terminal in Świnoujście. It's very difficult to pronounce, but it's a very, a very important Polish word. Świnoujście is is a um, is a place in in northern Poland, in the Baltic Sea, when we have a major LNG terminal. Um, we are actually building another LNG terminal. We already have um, have um, several long-term contracts, uh, LNG contracts signed with the United States. So energy is another uh, another field of our our close cooperation, and the whole the whole um, the whole um, issue is about diversity. Uh, it's about importing importing um, uh, gas from from various parts of the world. Uh, um, from the United States, from Norway, there's another project called the Baltic Pipe. It's about importing uh, importing gas from Norwegian shelf, and the, the whole energy energy um, issue is not not just any kind of anti-Russian thing. It's just a, an attempt to 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 make to to diversify um, to diversify LNG imports and the United States is is of, um, and our cooperation is of crucial importance here. So um, the, another in, in, important um, uh, both political and economic issue is of course five G. Um, Poland intends to adopt long lasting solutions on the cybersecurity of five G technology in order to manage our critical infrastructure more effectively. We welcome more cooperation and information exchanges on 5G with our key partners. As you know, now in the world there is a big discussion about, about 5G and just want, um, I don't want again to mention any companies, but you know what company I have in mind. Um, there are already, um, I believe, only two countries in Europe which signed Romania there's a Romanian consul here, yes. Romania and Poland signed um, an agreement with the United States, a kind of declaration rather than an agreement on 5G. Um, our declaration underlines that a robust and comprehensive approach to network security requires a careful and complete evaluation of 5G infrastructure and software providers. The declaration went on further to state that all countries must ensure that only trusted and reliable suppliers participate in our networks to protect them from unauthorized access or interference. But there has been a big discussion in Europe about 5G and it's, it's, it's very controversial. Uh, these, um, in our opinion, unreliable suppliers have a lot of influence on discussions in Europe. So again, uh, the position of the United States is very important uh, for us. Poland has made great economic progress in recent times, starting from a broken post-communist system. Today, Poland is the, in the top 30 of the world's biggest economies, in the top 30 of the world's biggest economies. And it's one of the largest economies of the European Union, with an annual growth rate of 5%, a record growth rate of 5%. The economic growth gap between Poland and wealthier Western countries has continuously been getting smaller. Our government has set out five pillars for Poland's economic development. Re-industrialization, development of innovative companies, ensuring capital for development, foreign expansion, and social and regional growth. Along these lines, we are confident that we are making good progress. As I said, the European Union continues to be by far Poland's main economic partner. In short, the Polish economy is a European economy. Europe accounts for most of Poland's foreign trade. The majority of foreign investment in Poland comes from other European countries, and most of our investment abroad goes elsewhere in Europe. We recognize the great benefits of the EU single market, including for the Polish economy, and Poland stands behind the principles on which the single market was founded, 
freedom of movement of people, goods, capital, and services. This is an European ideal, this freedom of, of movement of people, goods, capital, and services. It doesn't always work very well, especially for Central Eastern European countries. Um, but we are in, in the process of, of permanent discussion about, about these issues. But uh, we seek to decrease barriers in transportation, services, labor, and the digital markets. These, 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 um, these issues are the most um, important ones. So we, but at the same time, we want to avoid over-dependence on one market. Taking advantage of globalization and trade liberalization, Poland wants to expand its range of international economic partners, something which will also make us more competitive. This is why Poland has backed various free trade agreements negotiated by the European Union. While much of this expansion is focused on the United States, we are also working to increase our contact with our partners in Asia, Africa, the Middle East, and South America. And, and I think that when we discuss, um, discuss this cooperation in Florida, in South America, it's really very, very important here. Uh, not surprisingly, a key economic partner for Poland outside of Europe has been the United States. America is one of the leading destinations for Polish exports and one of the main sources of imports coming from Poland from outside the, the, outside the EU. The United States is also Poland's main non-European investment partner and US investments have significantly contributed to our country's economic growth in, over the last 30 years. But there is still plenty of room to expand our economic ties. American investment in Poland is still significantly lower than would be expected based on the existing potential of the Polish economy and Poland's share in European production. We want our economic cooperation to correspond with our market potential. And this investment runs both ways, as there is growing interest on the part of Polish companies in investing in the American market, especially in the innovative sector. New prospects for Poland's research and innovation sector emerged also from an agreement between Poland and the US on scientific and technological cooperation. So um, just uh, to make a long story short, there's still a long story here, but I, I would like to make it shorter. I would like to, to, uh, to give the floor to, to my, uh, uh, to my uh, economic counselor, whose flight from Fort Lauderdale is like in two hours or something. So, um, yeah, so if you allow me, just uh, if, if Pavel can now join me and, and continue. Is it? I, I'm sorry. No, I was just going to say a few words, but I know he's going to time crunch. Yes, so, so, so this will be like one presentation. I'm giving him my time. Mm -hmm. I have still five pages. Thank you, Mr. Ambassador. Um, have a presentation just like for 30 minutes but we don't have time and want to save your time uh, so instead of that I'd like to show you uh, here. okay just a short promotional video <laughs> 